Hi, and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. This time we're going to talk about arrays, and I've already created here my array intro class, in which I'm going to explain the basic concepts of arrays. First of all, let's write the Java documentation. And here in our main method, we're going to write the things we can do with arrays. So first of all, let's remind ourselves how we can create an array. I'm going to call it int array. You can call it whatever you want. So we could call it, instead of int array, we could call it um, uh, sizes for the sizes of something, something like that. Int array seems like an appropriate name for now because this is just displaying something we can do with arrays. Okay, so we can give it some values, like that, those five values. Or, or we can create an array, which I'm going to call sizes this time, like so. And in here, This is the same as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we have a new integer array with five slots, and they are by default initialized to 0. So doing this and doing this is the same thing. If you don't know the initial values, then you do it this way. If you do, you can do it this way, unless there are too many values to write by yourself. Similarly, you can do the same for strings like so and this is the same as that null in java is a keyword that means nothing so in here the strings would all be null by default. So let's see what we what else we can do with these. So we can print out let's see if we can print the array. It's not really displaying what we want it to display. What it's displaying here is the type of array Java lang string. This is the string class. So it's a string, and here it's displaying the address in memory or the object identifier or something like that. I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm. This is in hexadecimal format, which we haven't seen yet, but it's. It's a, a numbering system, so. This is, must be some sort of identifier or the address in memory. So this is not really what we want. So how do we display the first element of this array. We see string array, and then between square brackets, we select the index that we want to display. So this is 0, 1, and 2. The size is 3, but the indexes, the indices, go from 0 to 2. So let's see what happens if we do this. There we have the first element of our array. And here we'll get 6 printed out. Remember that 3 is the index number 3 and not the third element. 0, 1, 2, 3. So there we have our 6 there. Let's see what happens if we try to print sizes. Dot. Sizes, the third element. So we're going to print the third element of sizes. And indeed we get zero out. I'm actually unsure what is going to happen if I try to print the same thing for phrases. I could get an error or I could get an empty string. I'm going to check. And there we have null. 
So indeed, if an object is null, we simply print out null. To be honest, this is not something I had on the top of my head. So I was equally expecting to see nothing printed out, an error, or null. So this time we got null. So there we have it. This kind of tells us we can print a string that doesn't yet exist, but we will only get null out. So we have to be careful. That saves us the trouble. So in here, imagine we didn't want to print out null strings, then we will have to check beforehand if the string we're going to print, phrase is one, phrase is one, is not null. If it's not null, then we print it out. So in here, if we said phrase is one equals some string, then we will get some string here. Because phrase is one is no longer null, so we print it out. If we change this, for phrases 2, then we will not get anything out because phrases 2 is still null. Here we've only changed phrases 1. I think this is pretty much everything you have to know about the basics of arrays. The next time we study arrays, we'll see how we can iterate through the array and visit all of the indices of the array. And we will do that in a couple lectures time. So stick with me and let's go into the next one where we're going to be seeing the array lists.